Hi, you're watching Floyd Steinberg's YouTube channel. On one of my last videos, one viewer suggested it would be nice to have some kind of black box device for a music studio. And I'm not talking about that black box, but rather the one which is built into planes, which listens to the pilot's conversations, and which is used for documentation if something out of the ordinary happens. And this musical black box would listen to the last minutes or hours to whatever you did in your home studio, and if you lose an idea deal with a volatile human memory, or if something out of the ordinary happens with your other recording equipment, then you'd have a backup on your box. So today I'm going to show you how you can build this yourself in two ways. One cheap and one slightly more expensive, both using a Raspberry Pi and an audio interface. And if you think that's interesting, please join me in this video. Here we go. As I said in the introduction, the goal here is to build a device that records all the time, just like black box flight recorder found in airplanes. I will use a Raspberry Pi mini computer here, but for the basic task, any Linux PC will do. Let's start with the part that anyone can do. To make this work, you really only need a computer running Linux that also has an audio card or interface. Ideally, you'll have a central mixer of some kind in your studio that all your instruments are connected to. Plug one of the audio out ports of that device into the audio in of your Linux PC and then boot up that PC. Now we need to achieve three things, and all of them need to be done on the Linux terminal console. Firstly, we need to set the input level so our recording isn't distorted. Secondly, we want to separate our recording into chunks 15 minutes long each, and the file name should show the date and time of the recording. And thirdly, we want to enable monitoring so we can plug our headphone into the computer and hear what it's recording so we know the audio isn't distorted. This video assumes your PC has only one audio interface. Linux ELSA sound system comes with a handful of utility programs that provide everything we need to solve this problem. To set the input level, use the A mixer command. Type in A mixer minus minus help to see its parameters. According to this, the command we're looking for is A mixer set capture and then the level in percent. Command is on screen right now. Right, now let's record something. The command we'll use here is A record. Type in a record minus minus help to see its parameters. As you can see, we can specify the file format, a maximum recording length, and a file name scheme that uses the date and the time. You can also specify the audio interface, but as we only have one, we can omit that. Let's create a folder named rec first. Then enter the following command shown on screen right now. Your computer will now record audio. The parameters given makes it create 30 second long WAV files in 48 kHz 16 bit resolution. The files will be captured in the rec folder and will contain the date and time of the recording. To hear what the computer is recording, we will use the Pulse Audio Sound subsystem. Enter this command, shown on screen right now. This will route the audio input straight to the audio output. And that's it. Leave this computer on and it will capture audio until it's out of storage media. So far, so good. But I wanted to take this a bit further and build a small box that sits behind your mixer unsuspiciously, logging everything you do. There should be a blinking LED to show it's working, a knob to adjust and an LC display to show the input level. The box I ordered didn't make it here in time for this video, but all the other parts were part of my assortment of electronic components, so I'll do another breadboard build here. Here are the parts you'll need. This is a PCF8591 analog to digital converter, which we'll use to read the rotary potentiometer. Here's a green LED to show our box is doing its thing. This is an LC display with a PCF8574 serial to parallel chip and four connector pins. We'll use it for displaying the input level. 
I'll also have one 220 ohm and two 10 kilo ohm resistors here for securing the LED and the AD converter chip. Begin by placing the LED on the breadboard. The LED's positive should face right. By the way, the breadboard is just a small board for prototyping circuits. It's filled with wires that run parallel from top to bottom, so everything that's placed on a vertical line is connected. The small circuit board on the right is just an extension of the Raspberry Pi's general input-output connector. If you look closely, you can see the names and numbers of the pins are printed onto it. The LED needs to be secured with a 220 ohm resistor, which is connected to its positive. Negative is connected to ground and the resistor is connected to GPIO pin 17. If you paid attention, you'll have noticed I got that wrong here, but I fixed my mistake later. Next up is the LC display. Reading the connector pins from top to bottom, the first one is ground, the second one is 5 volts positive, the third one goes to the SCL1 pin of the Raspberry Pi's I2C bus, and the last one is connected to the SDA1 pin. Now, the AD converter circuit, which reads the potentiometer. Place the chip on the board, notch facing right. Connect the first four pins of the upper left corner to one of the ground pins. Then connect the two 10 kilo ohm resistors to the lower left two pins. They need to extend to the bottommost pinhole in the same column. Be careful not to short them. Connect the second pin in the bottom left to the SCL1 pin. Connect the pin left to that to the SDA1 pin. Place the potentiometer on the board so it's adjacent to the chip. Now, connect the 3.3 volts pin to the bottommost row of pinholes. Connect the ground pin to the second row of pinholes from the bottom. Connect the rightmost pin of the potentiometer to the bottommost row. Connect the center pin of the potentiometer to the top right pin of the chip. Connect the left pin of the potentiometer to the second row from the bottom up. Connect the breadboard itself to the Raspberry Pi. And then connect a USB audio interface to the Raspberry Pi and then turn it on. As I said before, I got the order of connections to the LED wrong at first, so I had to correct that. Also, I forgot one ground and 55 volts connection to the AD converter. You can see the device working here already, but that was captured after some C++ programming, which I'll go into now. Okay, the intention here is to make this an easy to use solution. So I want this app to be started after booting. The potentiometer should control the audio input level, the LED and LCD should show the device is working correctly, and the audio input level should be displayed as well. I also want the device to delete all files older than 5 days automatically, so the SD card never gets full. As in the previous example, I also want audio monitoring and 15 minute slices of audio with a file name that spells out the time and date it was recorded on. I'm using the wiring pi library here, which was discontinued in December of 23, but seems to have found a new home on GitHub. The git clone command is on screen now. Let's begin by including all the libraries needed for this project. These are needed for communication with the electronic parts, for string concatenation, calendar functions and dealing with practical everyday problems this app could run into. After that, let's define the GPIO ports we're going to use here. They are needed for the LCD, the LD and the AD converted chip. We also have two devices connected to the I2C bus, so here are two variables to hold their ID numbers. Let's start with the main loop. This will cycle endlessly and read the potentiometer value. First, I need some variables to store the state of the loop in. Then set up the AD converter and the LCD control chip. We can turn on or off the backlight here, for example. We will issue a system call to Pulse Audio to turn on audio monitoring here. Then we'll start a record using the same parameters as in our first example. 
The minus Q option ensures the program doesn't print any status lines. Now, here's the main loop. We have a counter running that counts to 10. Every time we pass 0 or 5, we turn on or off the LED. Next, we define parts of the command string that sets the input level. We then read the voltage on the potentiometer, which is somewhere between 0 and 255, and we convert that to percent. And then we show the result on the LC display. If the volume has changed since the last iteration, we will issue the volume change command. And after that, reset the counter if needed, a short delay, and that's it at first. Now compile this. We need to specify the YRMPY library we're linking this to. As usual, lots of errors. In this case, we must rename the file and remove all the semicolons from the include and define lines. Now the program compiles and we can test it. But now we have another problem. If this program is terminated using Ctrl C or Kill Command, for example, the LCD and LED button will stay lit and the auto monitoring remains active as well. So let's add a signal handler that calls a function that terminates all the processes we started gracefully when ending this app. Fix all typos and now we can terminate the program cleanly. I want this program to start automatically. There are many ways to achieve this in Linux. Place it in slash etc slash rc dot local or create a cron tab entry. I chose to place this in a dot profile file because that file is executed after login. So we can be sure all the environment variables we'd expect to be there are there. On Raspberry Pi, this is a valid way of solving this, as this machine boots straight to the user desktop by default. On other systems, choose one of the other ways. In doing this, I encountered one more problem. The program was now launched multiple times, which messes up the audio capture and screen display, obviously. To solve this, create a log file in the temp folder and check if it's there when launching the program. This, of course, also means we need to remove that log file once the program is terminated, so here's some more code to capture terminate signals and act accordingly. And that's it, a very simple hardware permanent audio recorder. Making this and this video took roughly two days. I could go and add some more useful stuff, for example, it wouldn't be too hard to make it capture MIDI data as well. Also, a rotary knob to rewind the tape and the button to start playback shouldn't be too complicated to add. And if I had a 3D printer, I could also turn this into an actual box to tuck away behind my equipment. And if you think that could be useful for you, and if you have ideas how to expand upon this, please let me know in the comments. I'll upload the source code to my homepage and link it in this video's description for you to download. And that's it for today. A creative black box for your music studio based on a Raspberry Pi computer. And if you think this was a good YouTube video, please do the YouTube thing. And if you want to support what I'm doing here financially, you can either buy my music on Bandcamp or become a member of my Patreon. Links are in this video's description. As always, thanks for watching and see you again very very soon. Bye bye.